the truth. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is please at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel built and radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. In order to force the president's hand and compel him to do what we hired him to do, which is run the government within the confines of the Constitution and only with the money he collects from taxes and other fees. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, what we have to look at is the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. The president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. Can you handle the truth? Welcome to the Jordan Maxwell Show. Hello, folks. This is Jordan Maxwell himself. I have not been able to do my show for some time because of my health. But I'm happy to be able to be on today with a dear friend that I wouldn't miss no matter how I felt. So my friend today, uh, my guest, is a dear friend of mine for many years. His name is Tim Leadham. T-I-M-L-E-E-D-O-M. Tim Leadham was the editor of the book that I was happy to be a part of with Steve Allen and Tim. Tim put up a bunch of... Uh, Top of the line uh, writers together quite a few years ago, and he edited and put together the book called "The Book Your Church Does Not Want You to Read," and it was a sensational. I think it sold over a million copies as of today. This was quite a few years ago. It's had so many reprintings. And we'll talk to Tim about the book and about whatever he's doing right now. He's got some projects I wanted to, you to know about. So let's see if we're actually hooked up with Tim. Tim, are you there? I am, Jordan. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> I think we're all ready to go then. And um, this is American Freedom Radio Network. And the people at American Freedom Radio Network are very close friends of mine, very dear friends. And I really appreciate the kindness that they have shown toward me over the years. And happily, I still have a show, even though I've been too sick to do it for some time. But I'm happy to be here today with my friend Tim. And I wanted to talk with Tim about some project he's involved in right now. He was, as I said, the editor of the book who put the book together. And back then, uh, we were working in San Diego. And uh, he got Steve Allen, the musician, comedian, movie star Steve Allen, involved. And Steve got involved with this book and uh, many other great writers, teachers, uh, educators, professors from university, and even me. He got, he got me in on it. And um, so I was talking to Tim a couple of days ago, and he's got some new projects I wanted everyone to know about. That's why we decided to do the show today. So, Tim, what's going on now today with, with what you're doing? Well, let's see. Jordan, we're trying to segue uh, the inroads that we've made with religious literacy. And as you know, when we you started, you know, 40 years ago as one of the earlier uh, pioneers. And uh, I can say this, we have made some progress. Uh, <laughs> no. yeah. uh, a, a long way. Uh, the church book was conceived as basically saying, look, uh, you have reason and you have religion. And you've read all about religion. Uh, and now... Let's take a look at re uh, uh, reason. And we collected, with your help, uh, some of the leading advocates for religious literacy, from uh, Dr. LaRue <clears throat> at the USC, uh, Steve Allen, of course, uh, Dr. Robert Eisenman, who in 1991, uh, against all headwinds uh, as an archaeologist, uh, went to... Qumran uh, in the Dead Sea Scroll, and guess what? There's nothing about Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Forever, uh, of course, they were, uh, they, 
<clears throat> were found in 1947, and uh, there was all sorts of resistance by the Catholic Church. Strugnell, who was at Harvard, was a Catholic, and he made it almost impossible to get the Dead Sea Scrolls released because uh, <laughs> no matter what the fundamentalist Christian said, there is nothing about Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And, uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, as a matter of fact, there's astrology in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Doctor, yep. uh, Doctor Howard, what was his name? Doctor Snow. Alan Snow. Yep. Alan Snow. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Uh, the yeah astrology. Uh, I guess is basically the basis of a lot of religions. Uh, yes, it is. It is. And Doctor Alan about, Snow talked about the fact that that. Nobody is talking in the Dead Sea Scrolls group of scholars. Nobody wanted to talk about the astrology, which is in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So he studied it to the point where he got his Ph.D., his doctorate yep. in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and his book, his, uh, his, his, uh, his work that got him the Ph.D. was on the astrology in the Dead Sea Scrolls. A lot of people know all about the Dead Sea Scrolls, but very few people know that astrology was very much a part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. But yeah. Jesus was not. There was no mention of Jesus in the Dead Sea, in the Dead sea Scrolls at all. No, so. even uh, Sidney Omar, who at one of the times was a great, uh, I guess, uh, in astrology, etc., he said the basis... There's nothing different between astrology and religion. There There's isn't. Nothing. That's it's right. The same thing. And uh, it was good that Doctor Doctor Snow, who worked with Robert Eisman, who uh, both of them have doctorates, uh, yep. you know, came up with with that. And I think, bit by bit, uh, this the truth is reason and truth is taking over. For this incredible, incredible story um, that uh, has gripped mankind for 2,000 years. Yeah, and I've been talking here lately within the last 60 years. I've been mm -hmm. talking about the fact that Christianity, and I'm not trying to uh, belittle anyone's faith or anyone's belief system. I'm not trying to harm or, or make fun of. I have the highest of respect for people's belief systems and things that people believe in. And I want to say that I am not an atheist. I do yeah. not have any atheistic belief systems. I do believe in the presence of a very spiritual power in the universe. And I respect that. And people call it God. I don't have any problem with with respecting the spiritual presence of, in the universe. I don't use the word God very much because I think it's misunderstood. But I, I'm not trying to in any way criticize or make fun of or make light of anyone's belief system. I'm merely trying to explain the basis from which our belief system have come. And this is why we did that book, the, uh, the book your church does not want you to read. And we had so many great authors and lecturers and teachers who contributed to it. We did book signings in Los Angeles with Steve Allen. And uh, we did book signings in Orange County. It was in the Los Angeles Times. And the, uh, it was a, it was a big, big deal when it came out. The book was very, very famous when it came out. It caught people's attention. And it's still today. It's selling well today. The book. Your church does not want you to read. And Tim Leadham is the editor. Tim and I go back a long time. We remember all the stuff we had to go through in trying to get the book published and all the you know, trying to coordinate everybody, and we finally got it done. And it's done. And how, how well have you heard how well the book has done since we did it many years ago? Yeah, it was done in 19, uh, we finished it up in, in 1983, or 93, I'm sorry. Um, and our first book signing was in Balboa Island. Uh, mm -hmm. And Steve Allen was there, LaRue was there, 
Eisenman was there, yourself, uh, Dr. Snow, and six or seven other scholars. And, uh, and it took It off. was a fun time. It was a fun thing to do. We yeah. really had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of great time together, all of us there. Yeah, and that, that day at that small bookstore, we sold 300 books. And then. Oh, really? And it, wow. And it, and it really took off after that. Uh, just about a month and, or two months later, we were invited to the flagship of, uh, Barnes and Noble in Newport Beach and we sold another 300 books. So, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And so I think it, and people are, I think we caught things at the right time that people are starting to say, wait a minute. I've seen what the Catholic Church has done with children and what they've, and the cover up, and I've seen what the fundamentalist preachers are doing with their money. We were, uh, Jordan and I <clears throat> were talking earlier about, uh, uh, there's one preacher, uh, in Texas. In Texas. His net worth is $750 million, three quarters of a billion dollars. And, <laughs> He has three planes, uh, and it, 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 you know, it's a real, that's a sin. That's a sin. And I think <laughs> one of the things that we're trying to do is have people wake up and make up their own mind. Uh, and I think one of the projects that we're doing right now is uh, we're looking in probably <laughs> the biggest fraud in history, is the second founding of Jesus. And, uh, and, uh, we have a book that's done and, uh, we're, we're, uh, looking to do a, uh, <clears throat> a documentary, an hour long documentary. And, uh, Jordan will be, uh, one of our associate editors. And, uh, we have Eisenman involved in, Larry Pano, who was the executive producer for the Academy Award nominated film Silkwood, uh, is involved. And then, of course, early on, Steve Allen was our biggest, uh, supporter. And, uh, Jordan and I spent several days up in Burbank with Steve. And, uh, he, he said, look, uh, and I have just one story, I think, uh, We've uh, said, you know, we're looking to do a film, basically, initially. And he said, well, why don't you get hold of Norman Lear? Uh, and Norman Lear is the head of American, uh, People for American Way. And I called him. And unfortunately, I was such a newbie, <laughs> I sent him about 400 pages of the book and the script. And uh, he personally called me back and laughed, and he says, "Don't, <laughs> I like what you're doing, but uh, don't ever send somebody 450 pages of uh, what." <laughs> yeah, he said the whole <laughs> but, thing. Yeah, but but he's always been he's in our book, Norman Lear, and uh, and these are the kind of people that have said, "Hey, enough is enough." It's time that people educate themselves, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're into, and with the the main man, it's about the story of uh, Jesus and their supporters. And uh, not only do these fantastic stories give people false hope uh, that's right. and total ignorance, they also... The televangelists in our country are milking and bilking people out of hundreds of millions of dollars a year with these fantastic stories. And paying and no every, taxes whatsoever. No taxes. So it goes right into their coffers, whether it's Benny Hino in or uh, the Trinity Broadcasting or... Uh, Roberts or even Billy Graham. He talked oh, about Billy Jesus. Graham, Billy Graham, Robert Schuler, all of these people that were all members of secret societies and 
hidden, yeah. their names were hidden from the public and their connections with secret societies and fraternal orders that were promoting, uh, uh, you know, dumbing down America and dubbing down the people and keeping them ignorant and ill-informed and unread and making multiple millions off of them. And this yeah. is what's been going on, and we felt it was – It's uh, and like I said, I'm not trying to belittle anyone's belief system. What I'm trying to do is be a teacher and help people to understand where these stories have come from and stop spending your time and effort and money and energy – on the church when the Bible itself actually says, get out of her, my people, if you don't yeah. want to share with her and her sins. So get out of her, my people, not the Buddhists, yeah. not the Hindus. The scripture says, get out of her, my people. Yeah. Get out of this whole operation called religion. Christianity has been misrepresented to the world, and now it's finally beginning to fall apart, and people are now beginning to question the validity and the veracity of what's being taught in churches. And this is what Tim and I have been trying to do for so many years, is get to the public the real story of where these religions have come from. Because they are misleading the millions of people around the world have been misled. And this is why today the world we live in is falling apart. Governments are collapsing. Lies are being exposed every day. The church, the Catholic church, <laughs> there's nothing you can say about that, that, that operation. The Catholic church, with all of its pornography and its violence and its connection to the underworld, connection directly to uh, motion pictures in Hollywood. It's just an extraordinary story of what religion has done to the human family on the earth. And we have been trying to do something about it, and now today, uh, Tim is involved in some really exciting new projects that I wanted everyone to be aware of. So, yeah. tell us about what 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 the people can do and what would they need to know. Okay. Well, since uh, and I can't say enough about Jordan. Uh, when we were uh, looking around, the the way that I really got involved <clears throat> was. Um, my daughter was premature, and uh, so I was home a lot with my daughter. And then, of course, about 1 o'clock when Kels took a nap, sure enough, what happened? Uh, you'd have TBN or <clears throat> Oral Roberts or somebody on television. And without an exception, they were all talking about uh, the coming of the next, or uh, Jesus is coming back. And, oh, by the way, Jesus doesn't have enough money for his hotel, so we need a $100 donation and this, that, and the other thing. And I got so irritated at this. And uh, luckily I met people like Jordan and Steve Allen and, and LaRue, who was the head of uh, uh Comparative the religion at USC, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so we were motivated. Now, since then, uh, we've had several books, uh, and Jordan also uh, contributed to this book. Uh, it's called The Book No Pope Would Want You to Read. And basically, I have to admit, that the first book was saying to people, look, make up your own mind, at least. If you're, if you're going to be in religion, get all the facts. Not the faith, the facts. Not religion, but reason. And as a result, the book, uh, has been printed in, in four different languages. It's done extremely well, uh, in Italy, also in Poland and across England. And the Pope book, the book no pope wants you to read is more of an indictment. I mean, I try. On the cover of the book, Steve Allen gave me a quote when we interviewed him, and, and I think Jordan might have been at the interview too. He said that uh, the Roman Catholic Church 
is a virtual uh, is organized crime, a virtual crime wave throughout history. And when he told me that, I'm thinking, hey, Steve, <laughs> Steve Arena, are you kidding me? But <laughs> he's right. He was right. And he wasn't laughing. That's a great line for his show. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, Steve Allen was a brilliant writer. He had uh, yeah. uh, something like 38 to 40 books he had written yeah. about history, about everything in the world. A brilliant yeah. writer and a brilliant man. Yeah, He's, a renaissance man. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he was the founder and the guy who started The Tonight Show on yeah. NBC. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he was an incredible entertainer, wrote music, books, motion pictures, etc. A very highly educated man, and uh, and he's the one that helped get the book off the ground when we were putting the book together. He did, yeah. So, and his wife, uh, of course, Audrey Meadows, who is a yes. wonderful woman, and she came to all the book signings, and. Uh, and what a sweetheart so, she was. Yeah, yeah you're right. <clears throat> so, so basically, uh, we've evolved uh, to the point that we're looking at religion, and we look at the story of um, Jesus is coming back critically for a couple of reasons. Okay, if you look at the reading, the writings of uh, some of our great mythologists. Uh, uh, including Jordan. Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell and two or three others. And then history has told about all the religions talking about, oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. And, uh, there was a story, there was a book written in the early sixties, uh, by Yu Schoenfield and it was called The Passover Plot. Yep. You're right. And mm. he was a biblical scholar and uh, worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls, and, uh, and when and he... And basically in his book, he was saying, basically in his book, the Passover, uh, the Passover plot, it right. gained a lot of, of angry uh, response from the public when it first yeah. came out, because he was showing that the whole thing was a made-up story. Yeah. Never happened. Uh, he was one. Of, he was one of the pioneers, and as they say, uh, if you're a pioneer, you're going to either get the arrows or the gold. And he, <laughs> got a lot of, he got a lot of arrows, but it's like people like that who suddenly woke up a lot of people and said, "Oh my God, you're kidding!" You know. You're right. You're right. And, and so we look at the story of Jesus is coming back as kind of like the. The German, uh, battleship, the Bismarck. It's yeah. out there, and it's certainly vulnerable. And we are honing in on this fantastic story, uh, which, and for two reasons. Number one, it's, it's a fantastic story, okay? It's, it's more than a myth. And number two, the people that are suffering from this, the hundreds of millions of dollars, and if you turn on television, whether you're in Los Angeles or New York or Chicago or whatever, I call it the Valley of Death, that there are 11 or 13 stations of fundamentalist Christianity, and they're all asking for money, and they're all saying that Jesus is coming back, and you better get your money in now to buy your ticket on so you're one of the 144,000 people that's going to be saved. And <laughs> yep. I, I mean, it's almost comic, but it's also these people can't afford the 100 or $200 a month like, uh, that they're getting built out of. So those are the two reasons. This is a fantastic, ridiculous story. And secondly, it's being used to to fleece a lot of people who maybe haven't been exposed to education, or they're maybe they're not that intelligent, or or whatever. But it's an insult to, I mean, spirituality. I mean, I just it is. 
Yeah. Well, but it's also a political tool that's being yeah. used by the powers that be in this world behind the behind the throne of power around the world. The Vatican yeah. is highly, highly involved with the mafia, La Cosa Nostra in Italy, the organized crime, organized drug running, white slavery, uh, pornography, yeah. child abuse. And it's just an extraordinarily, like Steve Allen said, criminal organization that's been around yeah. for centuries, yeah. 1,600 years. For 1,600 years, the Vatican has ruled Europe. And for yeah. 1,600 years, Europe has ruled the world. And so that's why all roads lead to Rome. Yeah. If you go back into history, you'll find that Rome was at bottom line on all of the wars, the violence, the, the pornographic stuff going on in religion, even still today, and that nuns, according to the and according to the reference books, encyclopedias of religion, the nuns were originally the prostitutes of the cardinals. And the cardinals had their kept women, but they had to put them somewhere and take care of them and feed them. And they had to have a home because they were, they were being kept purposely individual prostitutes for individual cardinals. And so they developed in the Catholic Church a place to put all the prostitutes and they called it the, uh, they called them nuns. And that's why today we have the, uh, in the Catholic Church we have nuns the females who were married to the church. And and when you say they're married to the church, they're married to Jesus. They're the bride of Jesus. And since the cardinals represent Jesus, therefore the cardinals can use the women as their wives. And so that's what has happened over the centuries, that the cardinals have used the prostitutes, which they call nuns. And that's interesting because there's a history that most people do not know anything about. And that's why today in, in Islam, uh, another religion is doing the same thing. The women are all dressed in black, just like the Catholic nuns are dressed in black. And the Catholic nuns have long robes that cover them completely, just as they do in Islam. And uh, in Islam, they wear the covers over their face. Because if, according to the Bible, according to history, in Islam, when the women would wear a cover over their face, it was because they were prostitutes. Prostitutes were known in the Middle East to wear uh, scarfs and cloth, uh, cloth over their face so that you only see their eyes, only their eyes. And this way the women don't have to be ridiculed in public for being prostitutes prostitutes because nobody knows who they are and so that's why the today in islam women wear the covering over their face because that's what the bible says the bible says that the women wore scarves over their faces because they were prostitutes and they didn't want people to know who they were yeah. So that's what's happening today in Islam. The men are keeping their women as prostitutes, just as the cardinals kept their prostitutes and called them nuns. And yeah. the women still wear the black robes. So yeah, there's a lot to history and the history of religion that people are just not aware of and have no idea in the world. So yeah. that's what we're trying well, to do. Yeah, we're trying to, with a small flashlight, is look into these dark uh, corners. And like we talked, uh, we're talking about the second coming of Jesus, etc. Uh, people can say, well, it's only a myth, so what? In 1983, uh, there was a several, an alliance between the Zionists and the fundamentalist Christian, and they were tunneling toward the Temple of the Dome, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, to blow it up because of one of the first, one of the things that has to happen uh, to bring Jesus back, supposedly, according to the Bible, is that a new temple be, uh, first of all, a temple destroyed, uh, 
and a new temple erected. So they wanted to get rid of the old temple, and this would supposedly hasten Jesus' uh, return. And in the day of nuclear weapons and suitcase <laughs> bombs and, and fanatics, this could, this could uh, set off something that uh, it's a pater, uh, it's just a powder keg there in the Mideast. And these stories build up, they build up, and build up. And religion is not inclusive, it's exclusive. And that's the worst thing about it. Yep. And it's, it's also, as you said, it's just a, a waiting to blow up. It's waiting yeah. to completely blow up and get totally out of hand, and that could start the Third World War, which ultimately sure. will absolutely destroy everything the human race has worked for for all these thousands of years. If they ever, you know, and, and we've heard all these stories about what's going on on the Temple Mount, and uh, and 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 on the Temple Mount is something called the the, the uh, Dome of the Rock. And the right. reason why it's the Dome of the Rock is because Islam's major artifact is a pet rock. That's where right. that's the basis for yeah. Islam today is a pet rock, and they even have a dome over the pet rock. So it's called the Dome of the Rock in Israel. Yeah. And the rock is supposedly a meteorite that hit the earth, and the meteorite scared everyone because no one realized, no one knew what it was. It was a big round stone that hit the earth, and, it was, and so the ancient people believed it was a message from God because God sent a message down here on a meteorite. So they, they brought the meteorite, and they and they put a feminine connotation to it so that you have to go and kiss the stone and the stone represents the female vagina it's a very interesting story about what's really going on in Islam and the dome of the rock people don't realize the rock is actually in point of fact a meteorite it is a rock and it's a rock yeah. from heaven so no, yeah there's just so many of these Artifacts are made up uh, stories. Supposedly, uh, when Muhammad left the earth, his uh, his horse uh, left his hoof print in, in, uh, <laughs> in the in the cement or the sand there in that area. Supposedly, yep. now, whether that's true or not, or if that's even half true or not, I don't know. But but I think the the thing is, intellectually, these stories, uh, it's, I think it's the term that I've always heard is, it dumbeth down. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's keeping people uh, ignorant. And hoping and, for, and hoping for something to come to help us. When the bottom line is that no one's coming to help the human family. There's no one coming back. Why? Because it's very difficult. It's extremely difficult for anyone to make a big comeback when you've never been anywhere to start with. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why we know Jesus, Jesus will not be coming back because he was never here to begin with. How can no. you come back? And so then when you find out that Jesus is actually a story coming out of India and, and Christianity and Judaism and Islam, all three have their beginnings in the Hindu religion, going all the way back to India and ultimately uh, also to Egypt. Egypt picked up a lot of its teachings from India, and India was the mother of all three of our major religions today. Yeah. No, you're right. You look at all, you know, whether it's Taoism or Hinduism or or Buddhism or Shintoism or Christianity or Judaism, they all come from that valley. That's right. It goes back to, that's why we say, that's why the Masonic Order says uh, that 
the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The idea is that if Freemasons want to know if you are a Mason, they will say, have you ever traveled to the east? And when you say, yes, I've been to the east, it means that you understand it's a Masonic term, meaning all the religions and philosophies and ideas of government, religion, banking, uh, institutions of education, all of it goes back to India. It goes back to where the sun rises each morning into the ancient east. And that's why our religions are all based on astrology and the sun. The sun was the single greatest symbol the world has ever used. The single greatest symbol ever used in religion ever was the sun. And that's why the sun is on the badges of police departments. It's on the symbol of police, the, uh, on government agencies, banking, industrial, military industrial complex. Uh, educational institutions, schools, the symbol of the sun is used everywhere. And this is why the Bible says God's son is the king of kings and lord of lords, because the king of all the kings in the world is a symbol of the sun, God's son. And I ask the question, who owns the sun? Who owns the sun? Well, theoretically, I suppose, if you're religious, you could say nobody owns the sun. Well, maybe God owns the sun. So, therefore, God owns the sun. The sun that comes up every every morning is called God's sun. And he is our risen Savior. Of course, it rises every morning about 530 And the sun, the S-U-N, that round globe that comes up in the morning, is your Savior. Just think about what the world is going to be like if it don't rise. You know, three weeks will be frozen stiff. The earth will not have any life on it and within a month. If the sun doesn't rise, we will be in total darkness and freezing. And so the sun is our risen Savior. And he has 12 helpers. He had 12 apostles, 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 symbols on the breastplate of the high priest. Everything is in the Bible is done on the symbol of 12. Why? Because it has to do with the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. And this is why you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are the four Gospels, which represents the four times of the year that you have four seasons of the year. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is spring, summer, autumn, winter. Uh-huh. And this is why, you know, when you begin to look at the background of religions and where they come from, it all of a sudden becomes overwhelmingly obvious that our Christianity and Judaism and Islam are all based on Hinduism, on the worship of the ancient sun. And my God, we could talk for hours about this subject, which we've done, and I've done for many years, I've been talking about this symbolic stuff that we are now calling Christianity and Judaism. There is virtually no legitimate uh, real history in Judaism or Christianity. I think, uh, according to my understanding, Judaism is probably the most eclectic religion on the earth today. The word eclectic means it's like a smorgasbord. You go into the restaurant and you can... Just pass down the long line and pick up whatever it is you want, whatever looks good to you, and put it on your plate. And so at the end of the line, you've got all that you want and all that you want to hear and all that you want to believe. And this is what we call Judaism. Judaism is a mixture of about seven different ancient cults that people have never been told, the rabbis have never told the the Jewish people about where Judaism has actually come from. It's it's connected to seven different ancient cults. And that's a whole story in itself. I could talk for hours on that. I've already done that. I'm on the web talking about that. The mere fact that Christianity is based on one cult, the old Sola cult, the worship of the sun. This is why you go to church on Sunday, S-U-N, Sunday. And on, and on Easter, 
Christians go out and have something they call the Easter sunrise service. They go out at 5 o'clock in the morning to watch the sun come up over the horizon. And why is it called a horizon? Because it's the sun god was called Horus. And Horus was rising. And every morning, Horus rises. So it's called a horizon. And he had 12 helpers, or 12 followers. And that's the 12 months of the year, the 12 signs of the zodiac. Life was a 12-step program, like your watch. It starts at 1, it goes to 12. You start in the first grade, and you go to the 12th grade. It's a 12-step program. You need to understand the entire subject of religion is based on astrology and the ancient mystery schools. And this is what I've been trying to tell people for so many years, too. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings or to belittle anyone's beliefs. I'm merely trying to point out that religion is based on far older material, far older stories. And people have never been told these stories. And I think it's about time we do that. And that's why I wanted Tim on today to talk about what are you doing in the future with this kind of information, Tim. Well, I think uh, just just going back to the early times, and then I'll bring it right to the future or to the present, is that I can remember when we came out with our book, um, and the book was uh, the title of the book came from a telephone company. Uh, it was to call the Donnelly Directory, and I think Jordan might have even been there at the time. I was driving down to San Diego. And I was thinking, God, what are we going to call this book? And then there was the ad on, t- on uh, the radio, and it says, The Donnelly Directory, the book your phone company doesn't want you to read. And that immediately said, this is what I'm going to call it, the book your church doesn't want you to read. And, I <laughs> think, wow. and, and because of that, we got the attention. And in the early days, um, you take it, you know, you go back even a hundred years <clears throat> before a Jordan Maxwell or a Steve Allen or any of, uh, <coughs> the pioneers that said, look, do some research. Uh, there was a lot of pushback. There was a lot of pushback and we had a lot of pushback, but I'll tell you, after about five or six months, uh, and we sold 5,000 books in uh, <clears throat> less than a month and a half. Our first printing was 5,000 books. And it just caught on because people, uh, and I got calls later, and they said, you know, Tim, when this book first came out, I'm thinking, you're all a bunch of atheists, and you're against this and against that. Then... People started reading this, and it made so much sense. And this is what we're trying to do. And, of course, the Catholic Church has really helped us with all their scandals. Uh, we couldn't ask for more publicity and, and public relations for our book because all the way up to the, to the Pope and all the way to the Cardinals in Washington, D.C., and, and, and all this, they were... They were better than the best public relations firm that we could ever have. But we're really, really honing in on this story, which you're going to hear more about because every day that goes past, uh, I even saw the other day uh, on television there was a preacher there who had an hourglass behind him. And also on the other side of the screen was a... Uh, money thermometer and as the sand went out of the hourglass which represented the day that Jesus is going to come back then on the other side was the money thermometer so the more he talked you'd flash to the phone room and people were calling in uh, donating and it was it was absolutely it was so cynical uh, it was it's hard like to believe Saturday that. Night. Yeah. Right. It's hard to believe that grown adult people do not see through 
the yeah. antics and the and the Hollywood antics of the preachers today. Yeah, antics. It's incredible. That's an excellent word. Yeah, yeah. It, I expected to see Chevy Chase or somebody come across and say, yeah. "Okay, <laughs> here I am." So, yeah. so what we're looking for, uh, Jordan, is to get s- some support, uh, whether it's uh, spiritual or financial or just getting the word out about uh, what we're doing. And our first thing is is a documentary. And uh, luckily, we have uh, a very, very successful. Uh, uh, motion picture uh, producer. Or, yeah, producer. Uh, we have our studios are down in Laguna Beach. We have all the equipment. We have drones. We, we started out with nothing, as Jordan, uh, can attest. And now we have, uh, the best cameras. We have the avid, uh, editing bay. We have two or three people that are totally dedicated to what we're doing. And we're going to do a documentary on the story, uh, which is the greatest story ever sold, which is the return of Jesus, which is used to keep people totally ignorant and also to bilk them out of money. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. That's the way we feel. So I totally and, agree, and I think that... It's an idea whose time has come because yeah. there's a war going on in the Middle East that threatens to blow up. And when it does, there's going to be a lot of violence and bloodshed in Europe yeah. and America. And it's going to, it's going to ignite a horrible tragedy on the earth, all caused by misunderstanding and lies in religion. And yeah. the, and people will finally see <clears throat> that their governments and their churches are actually just corporations. They're mm-hmm. companies, corporations on the stock market. Americans do not know that the United States is a corporation. It's a company. And therefore, the Catholic Church and the different churches are nothing more than corporations. This is why all the different churches are divided into money corporation money and that's why we say that their different churches have different denominations denominations is the way you you divvy up the money in the denominations and that's why we have churches are in denominations fifties or hundreds and thousands and so religion has to finally be found out what it is doing to the human family and it's about time because we're going into a time of perilous and frightening implications because I'm just looking at the Jehovah's Witnesses for instance so far since the 1860s they've been talking about 1870s, 1880s Jehovah's Witnesses have been talking about the end times, the last days, and the people who have seen, uh, you know, the last days, the world's coming to an end, and they're still saying the same thing, although it's hundreds of years later, they're still saying the same thing, just as Christianity has been telling people that Jesus is coming back, he's all ready to come back now, getting ready to show up any day. And all you need to do is send money, send some money to the church. It's because the preacher is down to his last $500 million. He's down to his last <laughs> few bucks. Yeah, and so he needs some more money. <laughs> no, I shouldn't yeah. be laughing, but I, I mean, you know, it's, it's sardonic humor, basically. Just, yeah, I know. Uh, I know. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it is, and, and somewhere along the line, the people are going to finally wake up. And when they do, there's going to be a lot of trouble. When yeah. they find out that they have been misled by the banking institution, governmental institutions, taxing institutions, banks, educational institutions have been lying to you, and now you find out even the the idea of God's being 
uh, over mankind, and you find out that was a man-made idea, man-made institution, and all the churches are corporations and companies. They're all incorporated. And so the whole story of Jesus coming back is just a story to cover for eventually people are going to wonder, when is he coming back? For 200 years, the Jehovah's Witnesses have been told that he's on his way back any day. Well, they're still today saying the same thing, and somewhere along the line, people are going to begin to wake up. And when they do, it's going to be terrible because they're going to find out what they should have known before. They should have realized there was something wrong in the in the story, and now you begin to see the history is unfolding. <clears throat> That's why I thought having Tim on today to tell the audience about what he's involved in. So what what can the audience take with them? What do they need to well, know, Tim? Well, I think, uh, like I said, to simplify things, we're looking at this preposterous story, uh, the greatest story ever sold, as uh, which I think really hits it on the head. And so we're looking to to do a documentary, a and uh, like I said, in television, you can look them up on on the internet. Uh, has won just about every award possible. Uh, and, uh, commercials, documentaries, et cetera. And so we're looking for partners, so to speak, in this venture. And then, uh, we can also use, uh, the documentary, uh, to. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. <clears throat> let me ask you something. Sure, Do sure. you have a website where people well, can we, go to the website? Well, yeah. We're actually, we're putting, we're doing that in two weeks. Uh, what I'd like to suggest is that, uh, you know, we co- coordinate with, through you, since I'm yes. here on the main, I'm in, uh, I think that would be the best, is that we coordinate through you, and if you want any of the books that we have, uh, the church book, the Pope book, uh, we have two church books, one and two, yeah. Uh, and the second book, which is done extremely well too, is it's called the book your church says and wants you to read, uh, book two or synagogue, temple and mosque. So yep. the first book was just on the church and then we expanded it because it's the same. Uh, story. Well, let me, uh, let me then say this because we only have a few moments left. Yeah. Anyone that's interested to contribute, to donate, to help in any professional way, any any uh, intellectual way, anyone who wishes to help with this monstrous job of exposing the world to the hypocritical religions of this world, if you're interested to do something to help Tim and the people who are working with him, then go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show. S H O W is important because there are other websites out there with my name on it that I do not own. But my website is Jordan Maxwell Show. And go on Jordan Maxwell Show and send me an email and let me know that you are interested to do something to help either donate money or I'll put up the money for a motion picture. And there are people who are in position who could do that, who, who could come, come up with the money to produce an, an incredible documentary television show or something like that. we got all the professional help. And if you'd like to be a part of this project, jordanmaxwellshow.com. Thank you. Tim, thank you for being on the very show. Very good. Thank you very much, and we will talk. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Bye. I like very much radio. You're an American institution. American Freedom Radio.
You're listening to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, the network who perseveres in delivering intelligent debate, constructive dialogue with true independence. The freedom to broadcast the truth is not free at all. So what is American Freedom Radio worth to you? The empowering information with fun, honest and pure integrity behind it provides an example to follow. Friendships to flourish with the moral altruism that pulls no punches. The hosts sacrifice and show remarkable discipline in their duty to deliver quality radio and service to the community with strength, wisdom and loyalty. The founders of AFI wish to thank you personally for sharing your views and insights to make the best radio and alternative of media. Now it's time for you to give something back and play a vital role in the future of America. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio at Ymail.com. Vaccine, psychotropic drugs and artillery batteries not included.